And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Monkey Plunder. Going to be our first deck here on this fun Friday stream. We're going to be trying basically an all bilge water deck with some of these uh, monkey cards and the plunder. And this is actually my first time playing Powder Pandemonium. Realized I hadn't I hadn't played this card yet. So, you know, what am I doing? We need to play this. So here we go. Four mana, summon a powder monkey, and give a random enemy vulnerable this round for each time you've activated plunder this game. So if we've activated plunder five times this game, we get five powder monkeys, and we make five enemies vulnerable. Should be pretty sweet. Um, so our, our deck is going to be making a bunch of powder monkeys. We're going to have Jagged Taskmaster be able to grant those powder monkeys everywhere, plus one, plus zero, make them better attackers. Plus a good good amount of one drops anyway. We got the nine one drops with Prowling Cutthroat, Jagged Butcher, Crackshot Corsair. Those are going to be our important ones to go along with our Jagged Taskmaster. Um, we are <clears throat> we are having a little bit of nab in here too with us doing a bunch of plunder and Bilgewater stuff. So we'll have Black Market Merchant and Yordle Grifter. Yordle Grifter, of course, creating those warning shots for us. Our only Freljord card that we got is Sejuani, a really powerful champion that wants us to damage the enemy Nexus in five rounds. Hopefully we're able to do that with our Powder Monkeys and stuff. And so we'll have Gangplank, Sejuani. Of course, they have the same level up ability. Top end, a little greedy. Maybe we don't, you know, like this is pretty expensive. The Dreadway is pretty greedy, but, you know, we're going to have some fun and try them out. So here we go. We're going to try some Monkey Plunder. First time playing... Um, Powder Pandemonium. We're going to go play five games in ranked. Uh, just got three decks on the docket today. We're going to be playing this. We're going to play some Lulu. I always like playing Lulu decks, Lulu Fiora. And I like playing Teemo decks. And we're going to try Teemo with Aphelios. The Teemo Aphelios is probably the, the deck that's the most um, competitive built for today. Um, trying to trying to beat other Aphelios decks with the help of Puff Caps. That was a really difficult deck to play, because or sorry, to build, because there was like 80 cards. I could easily make that an 80 card deck, and so getting it down to 40 was really tough. But that'll be the Teemo Aphelios later. Let's first get some Plunder Monkeys. Uh, mulligan and keep. So I, I won't be able to play anything on turn two if I keep this Black Market Merchant. Um, maybe this Black Market Merchant isn't a good. Maybe I just go Mulligan, Mulligan. I feel like they're a good car a good deck to nab, right? Like they should have like really good spells for me to nab though. Let's keep this. You know what? Second thought, I'm gonna just keep my hand. We'll just keep all four of them. Let's get crew. Let me add them. Okay. Another thing to play this round. I never on the tree. Suit up. Missed. I wouldn't mind nabbing a suit up. It'll cost two mana. That was not a good nab. Whenever I said they'd have good cards to nab, I was not in envisioning stress testing. Never lost a fair game. Yeah, I mean, I think Black Market Merchant's good enough. You know, like, we do have, yeah, we have Yordle Grifter that can also nab. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty good. Other option would be, like, the um, F Fortune Croaker. That could be another option. Lady luck is smiling. I feel like they drew another, um, another plus four, plus four, you know, another suit up. No, maybe not. Well, the stress testing is the best thing for me to discard, but then I draw a fleeting card that I can't cast. The only way that that's good for me is if that fleeting card is specifically warning shot. I'm, I'm probably playing, so like, am I going to do that and then am I going to open attack or am I playing Gangplank before combat? I'm probably playing Gangplank before combat. And if that's the case, maybe I just play this Sonite Urchin next turn and see maybe we get another Gangplank or something. The got me good. 
Okay, it was Jagged Butcher. So it would have been, if I would have done it, it would have been Monkey Business, which I guess I would have had the ability to play. Suppose you still want me dead. No till you scream for mercy. Shuffle. In range. I've got us covered. You're bluffing. Oh yeah, I guess I should go warning shot then monkey business first. I was just gonna play the, the monkey business afterwards. But maybe I should do that the warning shot first and then the monkey business so I could attack with the monkey business. Also. I was you know, like I'm just kinda used to like saving warning shot for, you know, like with especially with Sejuani, like and like these Riptide Rexes, like with these three cards I wanna save warning shot. Yeah, you know, that's what I was thinking. Like, like their their way to win is like get a whole bunch of elusives, right? And like make a make a bunch of elusives. And you know, I wanted to save Warring Shot with Sejuani with a bunch of elusives. That's what I was thinking. Twist of Fate's gonna be pretty messy though too. We have six Warning Shots, or just yeah, just in the deck. Yeah, yeah, but not not in our hand. Okay. Yeah. Looks like I'm on a hot streak. Alright, so that's four. As far as leveling up is concerned. Taking eight here. See, they're, they're doing this for the... Um, man, I wish this was five. They're doing this for the 3-1 elusives, I would have to think. I okay, alright. I guess we'll, we'll play it now. Pain is I wanted to, to do that. This is me going down seven, eight, nine. Going down to five right now. I need Riptide Rex this next turn. This just does one to all enemies. Wow. Down to two. So I just need any kind of burn spell to kill me. Should have waited just one little bit more for this Sejuani, but. <clears throat> Unfortunately, Burblefish is still pretty unfair. I'll take my time. I am reborn of salt and dry. They did like no damage to me before like that turn, and then I'm just completely dead there on turn six. <clears throat> Still baffling why they think that printing zero mana three one elusives is acceptable, and then even just you get more cards also. Oh well, that was it was a fun game. We got to do some cool stuff, but GG Wiggly Burblefish. Blue as the serpent. monkey business earlier. Yes, if I would have gone for monkey business earlier, I don't think I kill I think I just do an additional two points of damage, so I don't think we kill him. 
nerf purple fish to 10 mana i mean just shouldn't exist just don't have just don't have just don't print free cards especially free elusives It's where you always mess up with with these kind of card games that are built around you know spending mana like mana is the the resource and you just don't print things that cost zero mana just don't that's where you always mess up with card games i think it's worth doing that parlay there instead of playing the cutthroat but You know, we get the, the plunder on their turn. It, it does hurt, like, my Jagged Butcher, because that would have been nice to have the Jagged Butcher for the next turn. I never... Hmm. Because like if I would have played Cutthroat first, they don't, they don't um, attack. Then I could go Parlay and then and then Jagged Butcher. But the problem with that Parlay then Jagged Butcher, the problem with that line would have been they would have had the two mana to be able to protect their um, their two mana to be able to protect their Teemo. Hopefully we nab a removal spell. Ooh. Yeah, makes more sense to take to play this first. Yuck. I don't think I play that, do I? It just helps them, doesn't it? Yeah, we'll save spell mana. Come on, removal spell. Stop. Opponent, where's your removal? We're at three right now. Considering just warning shotting to make it four. Yeah, we'll go ahead and do it. Because the next turn, attacking, you know, attacking with the Crackshot Corsair, this next turn is going to make it five. Peddler is the most important card. So the Sejuani may not overwhelm if they have, you know, Elixir of Iron, um, Troll Chan, anything like that. Well, that's good for me. Well, I mean, good-ish for me. Goodish is, you know, saying that <clears throat> my, you know, my my fearsome thing here still hits them and, and you know frostbites everything. That's that was the good part. Like they should not have done the black market merchant, right? They probably should have done the prowling cutthroat. The seek tells me 
Mm. I don't think I'm supposed to play that. Even though that could help me find warning shots, but that's just, you know, pretty bad to play against a Puffcat Peddler deck. I'm not gonna play. Yeah, I'm definitely not gonna play it later. It, it is better to play now than later, but I don't think I just play. I don't. I just don't think I play it at all. Um, but yeah, it, I would definitely not want to play it later. But yeah, I don't think I played it at all. Just like this Hexcore Foundry, I'm never gonna play. It's a good attack. It's a good attack. I regret covering that up, that other thing up. What's the rush, huh? Hold it, sweetheart. I'm not gonna give them free mystic shots whenever they have two peddlers. You know, and as you're gonna play like just a free mystic shot's just really good for them. I I shouldn't I was hasty on playing that gangplank. So, I don't have a 3-2 now anymore, but I guess the, the good news, even though I don't have a 3-2, we'll have room for a Powder Keg. Killing their Peddler was awesome for us, so I, I feel very confident about winning this game. If they can't kill my champions here. None of those cards matter. I don't want to, like, play, you know, said play a 3-2 for a body. I don't want to play, like, a 3-2 for a body, and then they, like, Thermogenic Beam and kill Gangplank. I'm I'm getting the attack in while I can. Or, like, we want to get the attack in immediately and get this powerful explosion. Oh, you just meant, oh, yeah, 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 you, were, you said that. It was, I just read that delayed. You you're talking about the, the previous round. Gotcha. We're good. Don't ask where it's from. Ask how much. Okay. One and one. You have no mystic shot. The Witcher's Claw triumphs. Win a game with Freljord. Helios Twisted Fate. Okay, so this is a, a deck that's going to draw a lot of cards, be kind of slow. Maybe we can get a lot of damage in with our plunder stuff. I wonder if I should keep a salvage because this is, you know, later game. It's not like an aggressive line keeping a salvage, but, it's, you know, for playing a later game. I don't know. I kind of want to keep a salvage. This is a really tough choice. Uh, I don't know. I guess no. I think if I if I maybe if I'm like not keeping gangplank, we keep a salvage. Maybe because but like I'm already keeping something that takes a while to play, you know, turn five to play. So I'm, I'm gonna need other stuff beforehand. No, Frelia is not that bad. No, we were just joking. As far as like the tier goes, it's like. <clears throat> tier 1 is Targon for the regions. Tier 2 is like a moat between Tier 1 and Tier 3 because there's that big of a space. Tier 3 is Bilgewater um, and PNZ. And then Tier 4 is like Freljord. And then... 
uh, I don't know. Then like maybe like Nox maybe Noxus Demacia on tier four also. Yeah, Demacia is definitely on tier four. So like tier four is like Freljord and Demacia. And then tier five Noxus. I'm sure I'm gonna forget about some regions. Tier five like Noxus and Shadow Isles. Tier six Ionia. Is that all the regions? Did I forget? Did I forget a region? There's definitely a tier two moat that's in between <laughs> Targon and the rest. Targon's that high up. So that's what I'd say. We got Bilgewater on tier one. Nothing on tier two. Tier three is Bilgewater and PNZ, and then Freljord and Demacia. So probably Aphelios, because that would be the worst thing for me to see. I wanted to parlay on this turn, because I'm not going to have Plunder turned on on this turn otherwise. I didn't want to just like Plunder on my turn. Or I didn't want to parlay on my turn, because I already had Plunder turned on on that turn. What's up, Moonlight? I'm doing good. Hopefully you're doing good as well. Yeah, Bilgewater and PNZ were my next two. Is our Noxus decks doing that good? Okay, maybe... So I need... I need yeah, Noxus should be bumped up a tier then. Yeah, Bilgewater and PNZ are the best non-Targon regions. Alright, so I don't get an extra plunder for this parlay, but I'm, you know, I'm taking the kill. It's a good... It's a good kill. It allows for a good open attack. How has it only been one time that I've activated Plunder this game? Like, I've... I attacked... How is it... How is this only one? I, like, attacked with a Crackshot Corsair and dealt damage, and then, like, the next time... Oh, we've activated Plunder. Okay, so it's Jagged Butcher was a card that we activated. So we, okay, that's what it's talking about. Oh, well, this card isn't, this this isn't as nearly as good. I was thinking this was like, I guess I was kind of thinking of like rounds that you dealt Nexus damage. But it's card that, cards that have the Plunder ability. Oh, well, um, yeah, we're maybe not a very good Powder Pandemonium deck. So basically we have... What, Black Market Merchant and Jagged Butcher? Are those... Those are kind of about it. And then, like... Riptide Rex. Jagged Taskmaster. Okay, that's another card. That could be a Plunder card. Sunlight guide you, my brethren. I'm not greedy. My friends, though. Do I Spacey Sketcher away the Powder Pandemonium? I don't know. I can wait a turn for Spacey Sketcher. We don't have to just do it right now. There's nothing that we have to get right now. Okay, I may just Spacey Sketcher away this Riptide Rex. Oh, wait. Spacey Sketcher costs one mana. I couldn't play it anyway. I was thinking... You know, I'm just used to, like, the Black Market Merchant. I was thinking it costs zero with Black Market Merchant. Sorry. Okay, so we're at three currently. Captain. I know that if I... If I pass, they probably challenge, but I just don't want to take the risk, right? Like, I don't want to pass priority, and then they also pass back, and I just waste my turn. This does allow them to challenge my Powder Keg, to kill the Powder Keg. Um, but, of course, I'll just probably, I'll just Warring Shot if they do that, and then I'll make um, Gangplank 4 out of 5. All right, four out of five. Bow to no one. We have both Pandemonium and Monkey Business. 
I the question was why why are we playing Pandemonium instead of Monkey Business? Like we have we have one copy of Monkey Business, two copies of Pandemonium. I also didn't this is my first time playing Pandemonium. I guess I didn't really realize exactly what the card did until now. <laughs> So that's going to be just fine with me. Yep, like this is not going to work out well for them. Because we're going to have leveled up Sejuani. Also Frostbites. This is not going to work out well for them. <laughs> this is not going to work out well. They're, they are very dead. Back, heretic. Hmm. Because... Once the Yorl Grifter hits them, then that levels up Sejuani, and then the Gangplank hits them, and then it frostbites their team. But yeah, this just does, this will not work out well for them. Three. Good. So. <laughs> Alright, Zoe Aphelios. So yeah, even though I'm not playing like the most plunder cards to make Powder Pandemonium the best it can be, I think we're just playing a good deck that has Powder Pandemonium in it. Now, we do have the attack token turn six. I, I kind of want to keep Sejuani, but we're, we're going to need early stuff. I'm just going to mulligan the fours and the sixes. Okay, I like this. This could be a good Jagged Butcher. All right, I like I like this one, two, three. Lucky you. I'm the last thing you'll see. I'll be quick. Only a fool would enter battle unprepared. No, Aphelios. Play something else. E. The, the worst part of my deck is probably this top end, right? This, um, these eight, nine mana cards, they're probably too expensive, right? Like, our deck probably doesn't need Riptide Rex in Dreadway. They haven't been necessary in any game so far. Yuck. Well, it was a fun game. We had a chance. You almost won. It's not going to be the best turn for me. There's plenty of killing left. Crescendo. Oh, that's too bad. So turn four, they've already played Aphelios and Veiled Temple and two Moon Weapons. That's a good monkey business draw. This is a this is a really good draw. Like we, we get to monkey business and gangplank this turn. I'm basically thinking like, how do I want like to, to use this powder keg? And I think just using the powder keg to get an, an additional damage on the with the warning shots going to be a good play. Take my time. 
This is turn five for them. They've played so many cards. So like their their board is full, right? So like attacking and trading is beneficial for them because like the the more they get to trade, then the more they get to play all these other cards that they have in hand. So they they want to just throw blockers out there. The Oral Grifter will give me a warning shot to be able to turn on Riptide Rex. Am I worried about them using Hush? on this cutthroat, you know, like going hush block with the fangs. That's something, I'm, you know, that's, that makes like attacking with that thing not as easy. And yeah, that's, that's basically telling me they have hush with, with stunning that instead of stunning my fearsome. Oh, okay, they don't speak before. This... This game has been over since turn three. <laughs> since turn three of Helios. Um, unfortunately, our deck, we just don't, we're not, you know, we don't really play removal. We can't handle turn three of Helios. And their, their hand was perfect. Not only turn three of Helios, but just, um, you know, really a perfect hand with the, with the Veil Temple and two moon weapons on turn four. We don't, we don't have anything nearly as good. I should probably just cast Doom Beast there instead of passing. If this all holds up, I think my best play is to open attack with the Gangplank and then play Riptide Rex afterwards instead of playing Riptide Rex, instead of going Warning, because we'll have we'll have the Powder Keg and so that we'll deal two damage to things. So like if we can kind of clear out their board and, um, and then play Riptide Rex afterwards that maybe, rip, you know, a whole bunch of these cannon barrages hit the Aphelios. I think that's a better plan than go warning shot and Rex first and Rex just kind of get split up and do like a bunch of damage to like these little things and some Nexus damage and you know we still die to the Aphelios. But they're nowhere near done playing cards. Oh no I guess they are. I was going to say they have tons of mana stone. I can't believe that all worked. Surprised they didn't... Yeah. Just surprised that all worked. Like, surprised they didn't just protect Felios. Yeah, very surprised. Black Spear is pretty awesome.
Only two damage to Zoe. That's enough, though. Uh, I guess this isn't enough. I guess the game's over. Yeah, they they just play the dust pedal dust. Never mind. Well, that was close. Closer than I would have imagined it being with the Aphelios, but surprising they never they didn't protect the Aphelios when they could have and everything. Hey, we got a mirror match. We got a mirror match. If they play Jagged Butcher on turn one, I have Crackshot Corsair, this looks really bad. But I don't think I'm Mulligan. But even with that being said, I don't think I'm Mulligan either card. I just. I hope that's not the case. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Okay. Black Marker Merchant. Oh, no. Taskmaster. It's all about mercy. I'll shoot the wings off a Biltwas. Someone deserves your bullet, girl. I guess I warning shot monkey business. It makes it two for gangplank. The monkey business is going to be. You know, something we can just kind of attack in with this other Powder Monkey. Um, it gets rid of a ton of cards for me, but I do have the Salvage to get some more cards. Um, is it worth attacking with everything? Yeah, I think so. I again lose an, lose an additional card, but we get a lot of damage in. I don't know if we really got that much damage in. Only three more damage. Yeah, I don't know, maybe that wasn't worth it. Yeah, three out of five. Yeah, maybe that wasn't worth it. Okay, good draws. So next turn, we could go Gangplank or Cutthroat plus Grifter. I'm not greedy. My friends Whoa. Can we do anything with that? So warning shot makes Sejuani four. Next turn, the warning shot is five, or just the Sejuani five. I guess I save. Yeah, okay. So many powder monkeys. Like, I could go for a powder monkey and, and try to have all that overwhelm. Like, are they going to be able to frostbite? Probably not. Like, that should just simply work, I would think. Bow to no one. Maybe I should be going with the monkey idol. I'm not sure. If they can kill this powder monkey, that's kind of bad for me. Yeah, just par. Yeah, they just have parlay. Hmm. I should. I should probably go for the monkey. Out. Whoa, that's the wrong thing to parlay. Question mark. No, I guess you got to parlay that. Yeah, probably have to parlay that.
So I'm, I'm hoping the Overwhelm right here kills him. That's what I've set this up for. That's what I'm hoping. Okay. Cool. Good job, Sejuani. We got the mirror, and we're three and two. GG's. I like not playing against Ophelia's. That's more fun. All right, so there we go. There was Monkey Plunder. I think that our I think Plunder is kind of strong. Like it, it felt pretty good. I liked a lot of these cards. I'm not sure if we're really that good of a Powder Pandemonium deck. And you know, M Monkey Business, Powder Pandemonium, those are probably our two weakest cards in our deck. Um, but they are pretty awesome cards. And I guess besides that, the Riptide Rex and Dreadway are are just really slow. They're just they're just really expensive. Um, so, you know, probably too expensive. So I guess if, if we want to make this more competitive, I'm not sure what to exactly replace them with, but maybe no Riptide Rex, Dreadway, Powder Pandemonium, or Monkey Business. Um, but, you know, like, that's that's a lot of spots, right? And so what are we playing instead of those? I'm not exactly sure. Um, I could see playing, um, like, maybe you play, like, one Riptide Rex because of how powerful it can be. Maybe. Um, and I don't know. You know. Maybe you can play a monkey business. I'm not sure. I would I would probably play another parlay to start with. I like parlay. I'd probably play another one of those. Um, other other cards I like. I like Pool Shark. I like Dreadway Deckhand. I like Fortune Croaker. Um, Hired Gun. Because whatever you play, you want to you want to be you want it to be Bilgewater. Um, Pill for Goods. If we want to get some more nab cards in here, I'm not sure. So like those are all options if if you are playing the deck and if you're, um, I'd probably want to stick to like those kind of cards. You know, like you want kind of cheaper cards. You want Bilgewater. Um, I don't think you want Sprayfin. So th those are all kind of options if you want some some other cards besides those. But um, but our our monkey cards are pretty fun. I think. Monk, yeah. If you want to just go all out and just play like a whole bunch of monkey business and powder pandemoniums, I can't be mad at that either. Maybe play like three monkey business, two powder pandemonium. Maybe don't play the Riptide Rex and get some more plunder and turn it on that way. I wouldn't be mad at that either. Um, you know, whatever you want to do. But there, there we go. That was monkey plunder. Those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. Feel free to leave those comments as well if you uh, try the deck out. Um, let me know how it goes. Let me know what you think of the top end. Is Riptide Rex and Dreadway, are those worth it? Do you like Powder Pandemonium and Monkey Business in this kind of deck? Um, I'd like to hear those um, comments. So yeah, leave those down below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. I can never say that enough. And I will see you for the next video.